You wanna know the number one reason why your tennis strategies probably don't work and why copying the pros is one of the biggest mistakes you could be making or sometimes I could be making when I'm playing my opponents. Well, I'm gonna show you why I think that's so true and what to do about it in this video. So stay tuned and make sure you watch all the way to the end. But overall, if you try to copy the pros, it's not for you or I in a lot of cases, and this is what I mean. Your strategy is determined by your level. And so this is really important to understand. If you don't have a certain level, then you can't implement certain strategies. And this is why copying the pros can be so detrimental to us, is because we're trying to copy things that are at a very high level and we don't necessarily understand why the pros are having to do what they do. Like when we see the pros on the run and they're going for this winner down the line, we're like, that's what I should do. And then we try it and like, it doesn't work. Or we hit one good shot and we're like, I'm a pro, and we try to do it over and over again and we miss so many shots and we wind up losing the match. Ideally, you wanna take the least amount of input that you have to input and get a maximum amount of output, meaning points won. We never wanna like, hey, I need to hit the ball super hard to, to beat this inconsistent player. Why? You're taking a ton of risk and getting low return because you could just probably easily hit the ball in and they're going to miss it anyway. I'm going to break down four different levels and also four different strategies for each one of those levels and show you drills you can do to improve those levels so you can get to the next level. So the four basic, I think, strategies and four basic levels is number one, your basic 2-5, maybe 3-0, and at that level, the number one strategy you should have or I should have is being consistent. Don't try to do anything fancy. Don't try to like swing the ball side to side. Just get the ball in. Just think about when you were a two five or just beginning, you would always probably lose to the pusher who wouldn't do anything except they were consistent. And this is why early on stages we hate and we hear all these the gripes about losing to a pusher, losing to a pusher, because the pusher understands that at that level, the number one strategy should be is just keep the ball in. As you see these levels worked out, you can actually see what you need to work on to get to the next level. And just how like if you want to beat better players, those better players are at that next level. So you have to understand how to execute at that next level if you want to start beating those better players. And also, if you're wanting or you're losing to players that are less than you, maybe trying to do too much, which is causing you to make too many errors. And if you just kind of level down to the right level of input to get the right level of output, then you will probably start winning more matches. And this is something I had to understand a lot because I lost so many matches when I was a junior because I was overdoing it. My coach was like, you're figuring out new ways of losing matches. I'm like, what are you talking about? What he was trying to explain to me is that some matches don't require you to do a whole lot and some matches do require you to do a lot and if you can't do it, you lose. And that's totally fine because we can work at that. And so let's get to each drill that'll show you how to improve that level you're at and then what to start thinking about to get to the next level so you can start leveling up and start being better players. So the very first drill you wanna start thinking about if you're at the 2-5 to 3-0 level is improving your consistency. And the base level consistency is making sure you can just get the ball in the middle of the court. Nothing fancy. So a great drill you can go out with the ball machine is see if you can hit at least six balls in the middle of the court. And what I mean by this is I'm aiming halfway between the baseline and service line. You can see on the other side I have some targets set up and we'll use those uh, later as zones, but pretty much between the middle zone, between the two blue, cones of the ball machine, that's where I'm aiming. So all I'm gonna do is focus on seeing if I can get six balls. And I'll explain the importance of six balls in one second. So if I can just, oh, so already I missed one. I didn't get in the middle, but it's okay. But here's the thing, one, and I would go, boom, two. Ooh, that's close to the baseline. I'll trim that off a little bit. Three, a little bit more topspin. Four, and then five. And then one more, six. So right there, I've proven to myself I can get six balls in play. The importance of this is really 67% of points around that stat from Craig O'Shaughnessy says that most points don't even go to four balls. 67% of points are from zero to four. So you got an extra bonus there, just getting balls in the middle. Now, if you're at this level and you wanna level up and you wanna think about how can I start getting to the next level? Well, we wanna keep that consistency but add a little direction. And so what now I would do, and I would do this on my forehand and backhand, but we're just gonna do the forehand, I'm just gonna do four balls, is hit four balls cross court. So I'm on the corner zone. So you can see there, oh, that's on the line. Let's start over again. So one, and I'm in the middle. I'm not really worried about my uh, footwork or anything as far as like moving to the ball, two, three, and four. 
So right there proves that I can hit four balls cross court. And I would do this, I love this drill if you haven't heard me talk about this drill before, but I would do each one of these and go, let's say four balls, start over again and do it five times. So I go four balls, stop for a second, do another set of four balls. If I mess up at any time, I redo that singular set. Now, if you're really going after it, you can do the same thing and say, hey, I gotta get past the service line. And if you do that, say, hey, if I miss any, I go start all the way over. But either way, it's gonna start building your consistency. And the reason why starting to learn to go cross court it makes your opponent have to make a better choice. Meaning that if they wanna go down the line off my cross court, they have to take a risk by going down the line and potentially opening up the court. So this is one other thing you wanna start leveling up and you have to have this set of skills to get out of this zone of being in that two, five to three oh type player. Number two, the second level or second way of thinking about strategy is how you can start targeting your opponent's weakness. Now let me explain that every time we go up in a level of strategy, we also continue to take the previous level. So like we were just talking about consistency, and now we're adding weakness. And this is where you start getting the players to start doing something to their opponent. They find a weakness and they target it consistently and hit it over and over again. Again, think about when you were, let's say, a 3-5 or 3-0 and a 3-5, what were you thinking about? Well, you probably had a good forehand and maybe a decent serve, but your backhand wasn't that good. Or maybe you had a good backhand and your forehand was good. There's something about your game that's incomplete and that's normal because you're still trying to develop it and round it out. And usually better players would target that. They would notice like, ah, oh, they don't either move, they don't uh, hit a backhand or a forehand well, and they target it. They target your weakness and this is normal. And so now we want to add that consistency to the weakness. Now in this particular video, I'm gonna only focus on targeting like a ground stroke weakness. There's other weaknesses you can target, meaning hence like movement, uh, a person's serve, especially if they have a weak serve, you can move inside the court. But we're gonna pretend that maybe they have a weak backhand. That's generally a big thing. It's like, hey, backhands are tough shots. And so what I'm gonna do is focusing on keeping my ball on the backhand third. Now I recommend you practice both sides. So just kind of like the cross court thing, but I'm gonna run around the ball a little bit more and use my forehand, my strength, for me and go to the backhand side. Now the reason I say you should do both sides is what if you're playing a lefty and you've only trained going to the righty's backhand. I've had that happen before where I've played and I've trained going inside out and I was like, man, this is so different going to the other side. So make sure you train both sides. So again, if I'm working on weakness, I'm working on moving around and I'm working on using my forehand here to attack my opponent's weakness. And you can tell this is pretty, ooh, heavy one. This is pretty standard for me because I use this pattern a lot, especially growing up through juniors and even in college. This is a staple pattern. And it, if you just look at it, it's basically an inside out forehand. This is why this shot is so popular because it helps attack either a weakness or a weaker shot if it's a two handed backhand. So this is one thing you wanna start thinking about. Now, if you're thinking about how do you level up, it's making sure you take each side, like this is my forehand side, and making sure that you can hit either side consistently. Now I have the uh, ball machine going to my forehand side, and if their forehand was a weakness, this would be no problem. But what if I'm in a forehand rally and I need to go down the line without trying to hit a winner? I need to be able to hit that shot consistently, again, just rallying, without trying to hit a winner. Because if they run me over here, you gotta think that as my opponent, they're going, hey, look, I wanna play to his forehand side, maybe if they're trying to bully my forehand, and I wanna be able to move my forehand to their backhand. You wanna make sure you can do this on both sides, including the backhand side, because this is where my weakness kinda of showed up. I couldn't take my backhand for a long time down the line consistently, and so playing a player with a better backhand I was just feeding in that trap, not able to get out of that cross-court backhand rally. The third level is starting movement. You get to this point where you start getting to like the four or five level because for the most part, you don't find a lot of weaknesses. Maybe they have a weaker side, meaning their backhand is weaker, but it's not a clear cut weakness where you could just hit a couple balls there and hey, I get free points or I win the point. You start having to do more and this involves the previous three uh, stages where you have to start moving your opponent around and then maybe pinpointing a weaker shot and putting pressure on it forcing them to maybe make a mistake through movement and weakness and consistency while you're all at it. And this is so important. So what I recommend you start to practice a lot is get consistently good at moving the ball around. Now this is slightly different from what I was talking about last time where I'm hitting a certain direction where let's say I am hitting cross court and then hitting down the line. 
a lot of times if you have an opponent who's hitting a lot of balls in the middle, you should look to move them, start the process of moving them. Another great shot to start the process of moving them is when your opponent hits a shorter ball inside the court and you can move inside the court to create an angle. So these two, three, two combinations are super important to creating more movement for your opponent and having them have to work way harder. So the first one is have the ball machine or your friend hit you balls down the middle of the court and you work on going side to side. As I'm going side to side, I'm not trying to hit a winner. I'm not playing close to the sidelines. I'm making sure I have plenty of margin and I'm able to consistently move the ball side to side. So I have the ball machine coming in the middle and I can take my forehand cross court there and I can equally take my forehand down the line. Now my first cross court was probably a little close so I just wanna make sure I can have great margin just like that and continue to move my opponent around. The next shot that I would have or practice is making sure if I get a short ball, I can create an angle. Now I have the ball machine set up, so it's gonna give me a short ball. Anything I can step inside the baseline. At this point, you have two options, really. You can approach or you can hit an angle to open up the court. When I hit an angle, I want the bounce to be inside the single sideline, and as it bounces, it move outside the single sideline. So I'm opening up the court more. So as I have the ball coming here, I'm gonna create a little bit more topspin and make sure that I'm just coming up on the ball and brushing the ball to open up the court. This, ooh, that's nasty. What'll happen is if my opponent hits a shorter ball that I can't necessarily attack on, I can move them off the court. And if they hit down line, I can move them more and I can start attacking their movement. And then the last phase is where we start seeing 5-0 and you see up to the pros, which is time. You start seeing, and this is where you see the pros, make shot selections based on taking time away from their opponents. Because if you look at the top 10 players, who, who has a clear cut weakness? I mean, you can say a shot isn't as strong as their other shot, but they're pretty much complete players where they can hit every shot in the book to a very high standard. So what do you do? <laughs> if you're ra rallying with Alcaraz, you don't sit there and try to rally with his forehand. You see if you could take some time away by using a shot combination to either move him off the court, and then if he hits it shorter, take more time, and by then, you actually kind of create a weakness. And this is so important for when you're watching TV. And so this is why it's so important not to necessarily copy the pros unless you're at that level because it takes certain abilities and skills to take time away. Recognizing the ball early, moving up to the ball early, and then actually executing the shot consistently, which is something you don't necessarily wanna do if you're at that three, five level and you're just like, hey, you know what? I could just probably get the ball into their back end and I'll win the match. Now we're getting to a point of time. And this is super important because what I can do at time is take the ball on the upward bounce. This takes time away from my opponent. It doesn't mean I have to hit the ball any harder. And what this does by taking time away, it puts more pressure on my opponent to come up with great shots. Now, a lot of players don't practice moving up and taking the ball early. And I think if you're at that level where you're at the 5-0 um, and you're trying to, or you're at the 4-5 trying to get to the 5-0, or you're a 5-0 or above, you have to be able to learn how to take the ball on the rise. I personally love letting the ball kind of sit there sometimes, but I do recognize that, hey, if I really want to hurt my opponent on certain shots, I need to take the ball on the rise, whether it be forehand or backhand. So I have the ball machine set up where it's gonna give me slightly a higher but shorter ball. And what I'm gonna do is move inside the court and take it on the upward bounce. Now, here's what I'm saying. Not on the hop, because that's below the net, but on the bounce where it's above the net. And this is gonna be really important to take more time away from my opponent. So now I'm gonna work on moving up inside the court and take the ball before it settles. I'm trying to take the ball as it's coming up and take time away from my opponent. Oop, too close to the sideline. Do it again. On the way up and take time away from my opponent. This is super key because if they're trying to play defense and they play a little too short, most players would let that bounce and then move back where I can move forward, take time away and let that time compound. Maybe they move again and I can move in and take the next ball out of the air. These are great drills so you can start practicing to solidify your level or to level up to the next level. If you wanna know more about strategy, make sure you check out this video because there's so much more layers. If you add this to, you can absolutely take your game to a whole nother level without having to improve your strokes at all.